number 31. First, I'm going to analyze the problem. Big picture thinking. There's, again, a box. This means it's going to be a problem within a problem. There's a question, and then there are the answers. And each one of these pieces, we can think of this as a high, middle, low. Each one of these pieces has key information to help me. If you're, if you're a visual learner, then all the key information is going to be represented in this, uh, in this visual diagram. And if you're a visual learner, you could look at this and probably make a lot of sense of it. If you're a learner that, you know, really gets, is able to pull out the details from the reading portion, then, you know, this portion of the question, you got to read over very closely. That way you can make sense of this diagram. And if you're more of a mathematical numbers type of person, you might be able to look at, at the answers right here. Understand that we have proportions, or you could think of it even as an equivalent fractions, and right away be able to match up which equivalent fraction matches with uh, the information given. So this is a really open problem for a lot of different thinkers. So choose your strategy and let's get going. Number 31, use the problem below to answer the question that follows. Then they show us two pictures here. Race one, race two. There's a red car and a blue car. They're starting here. Looks like they go. The red car finishes first. And the, uh, the, the other car doesn't look like it's, uh, it's missed it by 10 miles, I guess. Race 2. Red car. What's that mean? Starts, starts back 10 miles. Blue car starts at the, the start. They go again. Uh, looks like the red car does the whole trip, makes it to the finish line. And the blue car doesn't quite get there. And that's the X, or unknown. And it does give us some information on uh, that this distance from here to here is 100 miles. Okay, now maybe if you, you're looking at that, you're like, Chris, where did you get all that information? Okay, I'm a very visual learner, so I can look at this and it makes a lot of sense to me. I would go back and study this. Look at this problem, look at that diagram a little bit more. Now we'll get into the reading portion. And this is where you can, you know, those that are good readers can pick up those details. A red car and blue car complete a two 100-mile race. In the first race, both cars leave the starting line at the same time. When the red car finished to get the arrow in the right place. <laughs> when the red car crosses the finish line, the blue car has 10 miles left to go. In the second race, both cars start at the same time, but while the blue car begins at the starting line, the red car begins 10 miles behind the starting line. Assuming that each car's average speed does not change, how far, how far has the blue car traveled in the second race when the red car um, reaches the, first, uh, the finish line? All right. So that, that right there was supposed to summarize what happened. I just want to point out this. This first chunk is all about that first race. So just, you know, just breaking it down a little bit better. This first, this first part of that problem, when you go back and you study it, this is all talking, explaining that first section of the race. This second part is all talking about the second race. And depending on, you know, whether you're going to get your information for the reading portion or the picture, this one here is going to match up with uh, the second race, and the blue one is going to match up with the first race. Okay. Which of the following proportions can be used to solve the problem? So let's talk about what a proportion is real quick. If I was making, let's say, uh, chickpeas, I'm making, I'm making some hummus with an H. And it requires uh, two cans of chickpeas, so I'll say chickpeas here, for every one lemon. Maybe three lemons. I, I like my home is very lemony. You're like, oh my god. Well, I want to keep this proportion when I get more cans of chickpeas. For example, let's say, uh, let's say I'm going to use ten chickpeas. This is a big, ten cans of chickpeas. This is a big gathering. I'm going to keep this proportion the same. So essentially what I've set up a proportion, I've set up two equivalent fractions. 
And the way I find out that x is I have to, uh, I have to find out what, what would make, what denominator here is going to make, you know, this fraction equivalent to this one right here, follow the same proportion. Well, I find the bridge. How do I get from 2 to 10? I'm going to multiply 2 by 5, which means I've got to multiply 3 by 5. So x would have to equal 5. I'm sorry, x would have to equal um, 15. And this way I would create two equivalent equations or two, propor two proportions that match up. So right now, by putting this equal sign, I've made a proportion. I'm saying this is equal to this. Well, we want to do the same thing here. We want to look and find out which proportion gets us to the correct answer. So we have to break down the information. So I'm going to start when I, when I set this up. I'm going to first look at this first race. There's a red car and a blue. Sorry, I'm not that color coordinated, so it's just going to be all red. Now what does it tell me? The red car does it, does the full 100 miles. The blue car, I could try, I could really try and be, you know, more color coordinated with these. The blue car does it in 90. All right, so let's, uh, now what does this other one tell me? Well, the other one says that we don't know what the, we have the blue here. We don't know what the blue is, right? That's, that's a, an X mark here. We do know that the red one, during the race, it does the full 100 plus the 110. So the red one does a full 110. So if we go back, we have the red, and we know this does 100. And in the second one, it does 110. And then we have the blue. The blue, the first race, does 90. And in the second race, we don't know. We want to keep the, make them proportional, so we make it equal to each other. Now, if we actually wanted to solve for x, we would do the same thing as before. Find out the bridge. How do I get from 100 to 110? How do I do this? Uh, there's a lot of ways you can think about this, but many of you are saying, well, you could do that. And then you'd have to multiply the bottom by 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? You don't need to know that. It doesn't ask you to solve for x. It just asks you to find the proportion that would help you solve for x. And that's how we get to here. So let's say, um, let's say, you know, uh, you're a visual learner. You could have looked at this diagram here. And you could have pulled out all the key information that you need to make these proportions. Let's say you're much more of a learner that's able to pull out the details and visualize what you read. Then all the details here, you could help to write this one down. So the component that you have to really work on is first finding out what type of learner you are, which I think you already do know. But then also, how, how to make sense of the proportion itself making two equivalent fractions and how to do those type of calculations. Because if you get this skill, just like the, the chickpeas and the hummus, make keeping a proportion when you have a recipe or or you know keeping these two equivalent fractions equal, if you get that math, then you can just pick. Do you want to do it the word problem way and write the proportion? Or do you want to look at the diagram and write the proportion? You decide. Thanks team for watching. This is Chris Abraham, Go Math. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. Sign up for some one-to-one -one tutoring if you need some extra help. Thanks so much. Have a great day.